Hundreds of Ghanaians have taken to the streets of the capital Accra calling for the resignation of President Nana Akufo-Addo following a record inflation and the government's handling of the economic crisis. The protesters who were dressed in red on Saturday, September 5, waved their placards and chanted, Akufo-Addo must go and IMF no, in reference to the government's ongoing talks with the International Monetary Fund of four billions of uh, dollars to prop up the economy. The president last week sought to reassure Ghanaians that the authorities would get the country's uh, finances back on track after consumer inflation topped 37% uh, in September, a 21-year peak despite aggressive policy tightening. The incumbent is also reported to have urged Ghanaians to support his decision to seek an IMF loan. The president's move to seek IMF help has uh, raised fears the government will impose austerity measures which will further burden a population already struggling with a soaring prices. Uh, Ghana is seeking a $3 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund to cope with a record inflation of 37% and the collapse of its uh, currency. The city started this peaceful protest was the latest in a series of uh, demonstrations this year over rising the rising cost of living that has made it even harder for people to survive in a country where around a quarter of the population live on less than $2.15 per day, according to the World Bank. The West African state, which produces gold cocoa and oil has also seen its steady uh, currency plummet by more than 40 percent against the dollar this year making it one of the worst performing currencies in a region that is uh, suffering from the fallout from a global economic uh, slowdown what is the way forward for Ghana? this is uh, views on the continent stay with us It is always a pleasure to know you're watching Africa Media. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this other edition of uh, Views on the Continent, where we talk about uh, the issues that are pertaining to the continent, so what the continent is facing at this point in time. And today, our focus is on uh, Ghana, where protesters or some uh, 1,000 Ghanaians uh, went onto the streets uh, on uh, Saturday, the streets of the capital, Accra, on Saturday, September 5, to uh, ask that the current president, Nana Akufo Addo, was step down that he resigns given the country is uh, facing quite a tough time the country's economy is uh, in uh, serious trouble uh, people are complaining of uh, hardly even a meeting uh, with uh, their three uh, square meals and everything uh, seems to be going uh, prices of everything seem uh, to be going uh, on the rise rather than uh, reducing so uh, protesters uh, they believe that uh, the government of uh, president nana akofo adu has uh, not uh, delivered as it should and now they're asking the president to step down so that's the uh, point of discussion this day on the program uh, ghana where protesters are calling for the resignation of president akofo adu what is the, the, the future hold for this West African state? What does the future hold for Ghana? And uh, is uh, this uh, uh, protest, this peaceful protest by these Ghanaians, is it a valid one? Now, what is your take on that? Of course, uh, those of you who are joining us for the very first time, this is an interactive program where you can always call and have your say, uh, where you can always express your own view uh, as to uh, uh, what the topic of the day is. Tell us what you think about what is happening in Ghana or any other issue that is of prime concern to the continent at this point in time. And when the time is right, our numbers will be put on the screen so that you can call us and tell us what you think. Also, uh, televiewers uh, should uh, note that this program is uh, streaming live on Facebook. If you're not able to get to your television set, you can always turn to our Facebook page. Uh, the program is streaming live. You can always uh, watch on Facebook. Uh, drop a comment tell us what you think about the this uh, program and today on the program 
we have uh, uh, very uh, uh, Leonard Mind to discuss with us uh, what is uh, happening in uh, Ghana, and we have that uh, uh, in the person of uh, Nico Demus uh, Amegashiti. Uh, Amegashiti, he is uh, joining us uh, from uh, uh, Ghana, and he is a retired uh, assistant director of social welfare. Hello, sir, and thanks for joining us on the program this day. Thank you, Laurentia. Thank you once again. But sorry for the other day, we couldn't get in touch because of the system. Thank God today we are together. You are always welcome. And you are here with us to discuss what is currently taking place in uh, Ghana. You know, Ghana is one of those countries in uh, 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 in West Africa that people look up to. But now well, we have protesters on the streets are calling on the president to resign. What is the Nana Akofo Adowa government not doing right that has pushed Ghanaians to go to the streets to call for his uh, resignation? Now we are going to discuss uh, all of this in the course of the program. The next uh, 50 minutes, we shall be looking at this and what is the way forward? What are some of the solutions? that the government should try to to to, uh, to 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 put in place to make the lives of uh, Ghanaians uh, better and see that people do not always have to go to the streets to demand the, their uh, basic uh, rights but before we do that let's uh, get this uh, report uh, that uh, enlightens us a little about what is happening and what led to this uh, protest in Ghana take a listen <laughs> Marching through Accra on Saturday, protesters feeling the weight of Ghana's economic collapse called for President Nana Afuko Addo's resignation. He has failed and we are asking him to resign. High fuel price increment is killing the people of Ghana. Fuel and food costs have spiraled to record levels, with inflation topping 37% in September, a 21-year high. Meanwhile, Ghana's currency, the CD, has plummeted 40% against the dollar this year. Afuko Addo sought to reassure Ghanaians last week, saying authorities would get the country's finances back on track. The government is in talks with the International Monetary Fund for billions of dollars to prop up the economy. But protesters are dismissive of the move. We are speaking to the IMF. They shouldn't give them loan. They shouldn't give them. Enough is enough. We have gold. We have oil. We have manganese. We have uh, diamond. We have everything in this country. It's the only thing that we need is leadership. Thank you for that element uh, where Ghanaians are struggling uh, to uh, tell the president of the country why they are on the streets. So uh, people are really aggrieved uh, as to what is happening in the country. The country is uh, experiencing uh, inflation. The economy of the country is struggling in general. And uh, people, uh, people, some say that they can only afford a meal a day. Uh, people are uh, really disturbed by what is happening. And uh, they are blaming the uh, Nana Kofu Ado government for the current uh, situation in the current country. And if you're just joining us, this is Views on the Continent. And we are talking about uh, Ghana, where protests are calling for the resignation of the president uh, Nana Akufo Addo due to the economic crisis that is uh, for the country is facing at this uh, point in time. And I uh, mentioned earlier on that uh, we will be discussing this afternoon with uh, Nicodemus Amegashichi. Now, uh, turning to you, uh, sir, uh, let's uh, when you take a look at this uh, protest, what is your take on this? Uh, what can you say about uh, Ghanaians uh, going out on the streets? Apparently, this is not the first uh, protest. Uh, uh, some protests have uh, taken place earlier on uh, with uh, regards to the current economic situation of the country. What is your general take on this? Mm -hmm. Thank you once again, uh, Laurentia. Let me uh, get this across that. I am speaking for myself and not for any particular political party. I'm speaking as a social worker. I am very objective and will be very objective in whatever I say, no matter what, whoever wants to take against me. Now, uh, let me give you this scenario and then we'll come to the discussion. If you have uh, uh, to woo a woman, 
and then you tell her that you will want to. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Carry on. You're Hello. Go ahead. Yes, we can hear if you. you want to a woman, and then you promise her that you will give her electric shoe, electric brazier, electric panties, and then she gives in to you, and then you are not fulfilling your promises, knowing very well that you cannot provide a lady with electric shoes. The lady gives in to you. And what do you think the lady is going to do next? That aside, when you are campaigning and then you make all kinds of promises, you make your opponent look stupid, incompetent, and that was the slogan that brought them into power. The incompetent Mahama government, incompetent Mahama government, incompetent Mahama government that sank down with the people. These were the very people who told us that we are sitting on money. We are sitting on money, yet we are hungry. You saw the lady crying out that we have diamond, we have manganese, we have gold, we have all the minerals that you can think about. We have all the forest resources. We have the oil, yet we are still the message that they could cross. These resources are still available, yet the people are crying out. So I to tell the world, and that is it's bouncing back to them that Akufuato should resign. It's true. But the thought was what to do that is to three cities. Akufuato made noise with his Baumia that. Bahama was incompetent and that they took the sound for the betterment of the people. What do we see now? The dollar is up to 18 Ghana cities if it is not running to 20 or even hit 20 by now. So, what are you telling the people? You make slogans, you make clips, oh, teachers are suffering, lawyers are suffering, doctors are suffering. This, this, that are suffering. I don't know whether you have that clip. So now it is a lot of karma that has bounced back to them. You know about the boomerang. You throw it, it comes back to you. This is exactly what is going on in Ghana. Akufado himself came to power with a whole lot of demonstrations. Only one person, Akufado, could handle 300 and something uh, um, demonstrations. Even when J.J. Uh, Rawlings, the stole rest in peace, was in power against the military regime, which turned the country into a democratic governance country. Fine. Then he started again demonstration just to make the government unpopular. Today, that is just what we are seeing. Today, that is what we are experiencing. Today, that is what is going on. So. It is a song that he raised, and the people Hello, are happy. Media. Hello, the panel. In short, that is what is happening in Ghana. What else do you want to hear? What else do you want me to talk about? Tell me. I'll, you do the asking. I'll do the talking. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Enrico Demos. Now, when you talk about uh, President Nana Kofo Ado's government, uh, 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 has failed. What is it that the government is supposed to have done that it has not done and which is supposed to be doing that Ghanaians expect the government to do, which is not doing that has led people now to go into the streets? And is it that the government is doing all of this deliberately or is it that the government's hands are tied? Hello, Mr. Nicodemus. Ah, uh -huh, now I hear you. Can you hear me? Did you hear my question? Yeah, now I hear you well. Did you get the question? Or should I take it all over? Come again. Come again. Okay, I'm asking. Come again. 
Apparently, the uh, current government has failed in one way or the other to uh, make the lives of Ghanaians better. So what do you think the government is supposed to be doing or is supposed to have done that it has not done that has taken Ghanaians to this level that they have to go out onto the street? Is it that the government is doing all of this deliberately or that the government, its hands are tied? Good. You know, when we talk about the welfare of the countrymen, you are talking about accommodation, you are talking about clothing, you are talking about education, you are talking about health, you are talking about elect electricity. And these things should reflect in the lifestyle of the people. Right. These things should improve the life of the people. But instead of using state resources to enable to the welfare of the people, you are rather using these state funds to charter planes. Every trip, every week you are traveling, you are chartering plane at exorbitant prices. When the country Ghana has its own presidential jets, you refuse using that one, but go outside to charter. Is that not a waste of resources? Are you thinking about the welfare of the people? When the people are making noise that stop this, stop this, you don't listen. But you call yourself a listening government. Won't the people be fed up with you? You are talking about free education. Free education, yet parents are having to buy books. Parents are having to hire other teachers to uh, take care of the children and their education at home, privately. What are you talking about? You talk of uh, health. When we have health insurance, you go to the hospital. This does, it is not covered by, 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 by health insurance. Does it, you need to be given the prescription to go out there to buy. What are we talking about? What are we... Yeah, look, it should... You should, if you want to talk about salaries, that is the source of where everybody relies on. You increase your salary by 70%. And then the ordinary uh, civil servant, 4%. Are you joking? What do you think the people should do? What do you think they will do? Every minute, every second, the dollar is increasing. Every minute, every second, Fuel prices are increasing, yet salaries are not increasing. Well, fuel prices affects every sector of the economy. You bought, well, there is something we call uh, 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 trotro. Trotro means the public transport, which is common to everybody. Every short distance, it will stop. I don't know whether you have said, it is not the taxi type, but it is public type. Every minute, every second, it will stop to pick somebody or just see somebody off. These things are increasing exorbitantly because of the fuel prices. They will have to buy their, their spare parts. The roads are not good. So what do they do? What do you want them to do? That is why people have come out and they are crying. You've seen some of the placards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk about the placards. They speak for themselves. So, Laurentia, have I answered your question? Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nicodemus. We are going to uh -huh. examine more about uh, uh, what the Akopo uh, government should be doing and what it has not done that has led uh, Ghanaians uh, to, into the streets uh, in the course of the program. But before we do that, let's uh, get a uh, cross-section uh, view of a uh, cross-section of what uh, some of these Ghanaians, uh, uh, why they are on the streets or why they were on the streets on a Saturday uh, to call for the resignation of uh, President uh, Kofo Ado. Take a listen. Okay. Can we get uh, the element where Ghanaians are expressing their minds? Why are they are on the streets and are calling for the resignation of uh, President Akufo Addo? When the Speaker of Parliament assumes office as President, as a result of the resignation of Akufo Addo and Baumia, he must take steps to cushion the Ghanaian. Times are hard, isn't it? Petrol prices have gone up, isn't it? Lorry 
Wi-Fi has gone up, isn't it? So what are we experiencing now? Teachers are suffering. Demonstrators are suffering. Lawyers are suffering. Market women are suffering. Journalists are suffering. Police are suffering. Soldiers are suffering. And so on and so forth. So once we are all suffering, when the speaker takes over, they must roll out plans, reduce some of the taxes, take and find other innovative means to make sure that the prices of basic commodities and petrol come down. Then number three, the speaker has to take steps to make sure that the city is strengthened. Because right now, as we are all aware, the city is the worst currency in Africa. Yes. And also in the world. So people have said that even in Afghanistan, even in Afghanistan, where the Taliban are inside, their currency is doing better than the city. Why? Yeah? Okay. So we are also making the point that once we've gathered here as citizens and we've expressed our disgust at the obscene thievery, at the obscene corruption, at the obscene conflict of interest, it means that Ekufuado, Baumia, and Ophoria Tamas. Nanamas! Nanamas! Clearly, all of us are suffering. You know, the ordinary Ghanaian is finding it very difficult to make ends meet. I mean, people can't even buy cocoa, cocoa of all, you know, uh, cheap breakfast. You know, and clearly we have a president who is out of touch. We have a president who will not listen to the good people of Ghana. Ghanaians are calling for him to ask the minister for finance to go. And um, he's oblivious. He has closed his ears, you know, to what the good people of, the, of Ghana are demanding. So we are saying that he himself, if he wouldn't listen to the people, should be on his way out so that we can have a um, leader who would be compassionate, leader who would bring down you know, uh, prices, leader who would make life bearable for the ordinary Ghanaian. Today, even control of all you know, public transports has become so expensive for people to travel by. Others are experiencing you know, uh, the effects of Ukraine Russia, yet they are doing very, very well. You know, our growth rates in many of these countries are, are, are up. Unfortunately, uh, you have a situation where in our country, the government is so big, the government is so out of touch, the president will not reduce the size of his government. The president is renting what? Private jets at a time of Ukraine, Russia war, at a time of COVID-19. So clearly, this is not a government that wants to spend within its means. You know, this is a government that is clearly out of touch with uh, what ordinary Ghanaians are, are, are going through. Are you sure people are listening to this event? Well, that is why, that is why we want to bring to bed the people's power because we know he's not a listener. If he was a good listener, he would have listened to the demands for him to sack his uh, finance minister. As a matter of fact, there's a vote of no confidence by his own party members in his finance minister. In any serious administration, the president would have stepped aside. We've seen this happen in the UK. We've seen it happen elsewhere. Whenever there is no confidence in the government, the president steps aside. But unfortunately for our out-of-touch president, he's hanging on to the job. Well, you can't blame him that much. He begged for the job. Ghanaians trusted him. And this is how he has betrayed the trust of the ordinary Ghanaian. We, we cannot run Ghana like it belongs to a family. It, it, it's not possible. Ghana belongs to all Ghanaians. Okay? So, it is because of a lot of issues, including this one that we are saying the president must go because he's incapable of ruling. He has constricted the whole affairs of the state to a family, and we don't.
want it to continue that way. He has proven beyond reasonable doubt that this government is bereft of ideas. There's no way out. See, it's not going to be the end. We will petition Parliament to immediately start the impeachment process against the president. That will be when? Immediately. If, if, if we don't hear anything from them, and we're then widening the scope, we want this to go far. I have received countless calls from all regions that they want to be part. In fact, I was even with a friend who came all the way from Tamale to be part of this uh, uh, match. So if nothing happens, we we'll prove to politicians that yes, indeed, we will the power. We hide them and we can fight them as well. Well, I swear, as far as I understand, but I know himself said that if we ever got here, he was demanded to be here, he will get that. I see no reason why he will not get that. Unless, of course, you're calling the president a liar, which a lot of people seem to agree he is. You know, it is important that when we're having this conversation, we understand that this is one of our changing a few faces at the top. Ghana is so structured. Ghanaians have to say as to why they are marching on the streets or why they were on the streets on Saturday calling for the president to resign if you listen to uh, uh, some of to, to those who just uh, spoke as uh, some of them talk about the president being out of touch with his own people and not a good listener and uh, some say he cannot run Ghana like it is uh, belongs to a family so uh, this uh, what what uh, uh, some of this Ghanaians think about the Nana Akufo Ado uh, government uh, now coming back to you uh, Nicodemus uh, in the course of the program we'll get more of what some of these Ghanaians have to say but for now let's uh, take a look at what some of uh, these uh, Ghanaians have just uh, uh, expressed as to why they are on the streets we have for uh, one who talked about the president not uh, being a good listener being out of touch uh, with his people uh, what can you say about that? Uh, does the because he mentioned he, in the course of expressing himself, he mentioned that the president uh, had been called upon to uh, uh, put aside the finance minister, but that has still not happened. So, what can you say about the Nana Akofo government? And does President Nana Akofo Ado listen to Ghanaians? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, we seem to have a little problem uh, getting uh, through to uh, uh, Mr. Nico Demus. Uh, we shall be coming back to to him uh, to get his view of what uh, this uh, Ghanaians have to say as to why they are on the streets, uh, why they went out on Saturday calling for the president to leave her, calling for the president to step down. And one equally mentioned that uh, if uh, the president, it's only no matter the president listen to the, listens to this call. And if he doesn't listen, it doesn't mean that he is, uh, that he, 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 he will not expect the president to listen. If that be the case, it means he is a liar. So so what, what is your take on this? Our numbers are on the screen. You can always call us and tell us what you think about uh, today's program. We are equally streaming live on Facebook. You can drop a comment on our Facebook page uh, and tell us what you think. Uh, now, let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Nicodemus Amegashiti. So uh, now we just listened to some Ghanaians expressing their minds as to why they went out on the streets, uh, uh, went out to the streets on Saturday to uh, call for the resignation of President Akufo Addo. Some said... Uh, one said uh, the president is out of touch with his people. Uh, he doesn't listen to the people. Another said uh, the uh, president cannot run the country as though it belongs to a family uh, because uh, there are some... Uh, there's the, anyway, we're going to come to that. But now let's get uh, your reaction as to what uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the protester who talked about the president being out of touch and not listening to his people. Uh, uh, what are some of the qualities that you think a good leader should have? Uh, because if our president is put at the helm of the country is to uh, be able to make the people of that country uh, feel at home to make the people believe that they have someone who has their back so what can you say about all of this 
I believe uh, everybody pays taxes. You, as you work, you are being paid. Maybe all the deductions are even made at source. So whatever, whether, whether you like or not, deductions are made at source. Whatever you go out there to buy from the mall, from the stores, whatever sources, you are paying taxes on everything that you are buying. Be it water you are paying for, be it electricity you are paying for, you are paying taxes left and right. And you expect the ruling government to put these pieces into judicial use. That is, you use it profitably to the upliftment of the image and reputation and the general welfare of the citizenry and the nation as a whole. But what do we see? What do we experience? You, as I said earlier, all the presidential debt is just put aside and you go out there to use chartered planes at exorbitant rates for your personal comfort and not thinking about your countrymen. Is it a joke or what? And will the people, or do you expect the people to applaud you? No. Now, you are, the, the people were talking about the finance minister having to be kicked out. What is happening about this finance minister? He can take loan, make things work because Whatever the, uh, the loans the nation is taking, he is having a percentage paid to his bank because it is the bank that becomes a broker or whatever. Everything is paid into the, the, his personal bank, which then issues to the, the state. And that is what is happening. Initially, they make sure they collapse all the private banks so that this private bank will work and within a short time, this private bank has spread all over the country. That aside, they are related, they are uh, either cousins or whatever. That is why the people are talking of running a, 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 a family governance or whatever you hear them say, and as the placards are saying. I'm only speaking to what is happening. I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking as a Ghanaian, backed by law, a Ghanaian who has constitutional rights to speak for or against whatever is happening in this country. And he himself said earlier on that we all should be citizens and not spectators. Therefore, I'm speaking as a citizen and not a spectator. Within a short time, they are introduced something called e-levy, meaning that any transactions you do, financial transactions you do on your phone, there is a tax element attached to it. Sometimes you do the transaction, it will not go through, but the deductions will be made already. Whether the transaction went through, you try it again, it will not go through, yet the deductions are made. So in the long run, if you are not careful, you keep on trying, the money will be exhausted from your phone without you having a transaction going through. I'm speaking from personal experiences that I have gone through. Now, they are talking about corruption. Now, how can you transact a, a, a business on behalf of the nation without the approval of the parliament? How can you contract loans without the approval of the parliament? They were talking about COVID-19. A whole lot of money is coming into this country in respect of COVID-19 hardships. So, uh, Mr. Nicodemus, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we shall be coming uh, back to you. Uh, uh, but before we do, we do that, uh, we have uh, one of our uh, uh, um, uh, uh, telespectators, uh, one of our, uh, our guests, and he'll be joining us, uh, one of our 
uh, uh -huh. participants on the program. Uh, he'll be joining us uh, by phone. Uh, that's in the person of uh, Mr. Atem, Andrew Atem Ibakowa. He has his own view as to what uh, the uh, current uh, situation in Ghana means to the world, means to Africa in particular, and what this means to uh, uh, to, 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 to Ghanaians and what he has his own view as concerns this uh, process that uh, took place in the country on uh, Saturday. Now, uh, hello, Mr. Bako, and thanks for joining us on the program. Please tell us what you think about this uh, current situation that uh, Ghana is uh, facing. Yes, uh, is Mr. Ibako, uh, can you tell us uh, what uh, you think about the current uh, situation in Ghana? What do you have to say as uh, concerns uh, this uh, protest? And uh, what can you say about the Nana Akufo Ado uh, government? What uh, has it been able to uh, deliver to the Ghanaians as uh, the Ghanaians expected? Greetings to all the viewers of uh, Freak Media. My uh, my take on Ghana is a very vital point that all Africans around Africa and in the diaspora should understand. All what we need in Africa and what we are advocating and most especially what we are protesting for is a free and liberated Africa from colonialism to neocolonialism. This simply goes to say that any leader who is partisan and any leader who is a new colonial or tenant, Africa does not need such a leader anymore. With the rising awareness of the media and the social media, the youths of Africa globally are taking responsibility over Africa to decide and to determine the future of Africa. The agitations we are finding today in Ghana is because of the growing awareness of the social media. The criteria of leaders that Africa is in dying need of today are leaders who are going to unite Africa and build an Africa that is going to meet and reflect the demands of all Africans. And these are the leaders that the young generations today and the current generations of Africa today are seeking for and um, protesting and advocating to choose and to determine their own future and the model of leadership style of uh, Nana Kufu Ado, Buhari, name them, are out of date. Such styles of leadership Africa is no longer interested in. Africa is done with playing games of politics. We want real change. And that is why the revolution which is taking place right now makes it in such a way that all democratic elected presidents are no longer in charge of Africa because the social media and the media has given most of us the opportunity today to become leaders and to become revolutionaries and to become presidents where the people's voices are being heard over the social media and the sufferings of the Africans worldwide is enormous which has brought and bringing the African people together in forming a block of unity in order to choose and to decide a new form of system which reflects back to the goals and the aspirations and the visions of our founding fathers back then in the days of Marcos Garvey's. So this is very important for people like Nana Akufo Adu to understand that their rulership style design is completely out of fashion and completely out of date. We will not continue to endorse and to celebrate and to harbor leaders who do not understand the cries of their people and who does not who are not there to meet and to serve the demands of their own society to protect their national interest and their foreign interests so to say that the the the, the 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 whatever we are going through today the economic crisis today we are facing today in ghana is because of leadership and so we are taking this mandate to ask Nana Kufu Ado to submit his resignation and to come out of that position and allow the people of that area decide their own future. 
we are tired of all these democratic procedures and all these political procedures. As a matter of fact, it is very confusing and is very costly and is very demanding and it has created a lot of division and a lot of insecurities. Today, politics in Africa has only been creating needs to give citizens and, 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 and Africans the reason to keep going out voting leaders to come and solve problems which is caused by bad politics. We are done with this issue of politics because year in, year out, elections over voting, we always have problems that we are looking for somebody who is going to solve those problems. When do Africa leave such a position of bad politics? We do not want two terms, three terms. That is not what Africans are interested in. All Africans are interested in is in concrete changes, pragmatism, and development, which is based on uh, 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 all inclusiveness and seeking the interests of all Africans. We don't want two terms, three terms, as long as it is, does not serve the, the interests of the African people, we are tired of democracy, whether it is two terms, whether it is five terms, whether it is a long term, we are tired. All what we need are those who understand the vision of where Africa is coming from and where Africa is going to. This is very, very important that people like Nana Akufu Addo and Buhari should understand that the, because of the awareness of the media and the social media, a lot of people are taking leadership. They can be officially elected according to the level of the United Nations to be recognized as president, but they are not the ones determining, determining the future of the African people and the destiny of the African people. We, over the media and the social media, we are taking this responsibility to make sure that their position becomes irrelevant in Africa and their office has no effect and does not command any respect as far as the African people are concerned. And this is where we are advocating and this is where we will continue to protest and this is where we will continue to call on all Africans, both home and in the diaspora, to understand that our problems are common and those we need to come together in order for us to pursue a common goal which is going to serve in the interest of all Africans, thereby choose leaders, ordain leaders who are going to meet the demands of our current time. This is very important, that such leaders should understand that if they are legalized at the level of the United Nations, they are not legalized at the level of the Africans because they, their mandate and their offices and their duty has not met the demands of our founding fathers and the very reason why Africans are protesting for a free Africa. We need leaders who are going to break down borders, leaders who are going to unite and harmonize the continent, leaders who are going to seek for one Africa, leaders who are going to make sure that the diaspora comes back to an Africa which is well organized and which is well united to meet the demands of all Africans so that the dignity and the, 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 the integrity and the, the identity of the African people can be fully restored by their unity. But as we continue to still having such people who promote neocolonialism in broad daylight, who make promises, plans, and are unable to execute any adult human beings who are proving to us that to tell lies is a normal issue and it's a normal thing on state TV before all a, 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 a nation you do not have the shame of state recognition of telling lies and promises which you are incapable to do any leader who does not work with its people cannot meet the demands of those people we have leaders such as Kufo Ado who places sanctions in countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, and all of this, in the name of ECOWA. I want to know whether these leaders today have decided to serve the very colonialists that we are advocating, protesting to liberate Africa from. And these same Africans, in the name of head of states, head of states, who are unable to carry the nation forward, 
heads which are very big, they have now become very heavy for the citizens to even bear. These is, are the kind of things that we are saying that we will continue to use the media and the social media to advocate and to push our campaign for a free Africa and to create the awareness to give all Africans the understanding of where we are, where we are going, why the need we need to come together and why change can only come from us and why we can only be the solutions to the problems which are caused by the imperialists, which are caused by the colonialists, and which are caused by the new colonialists. We can be the solutions to this problem, and which is the very reason why we will continue to have this agitation until we liberate Africa. Thank you very much, Prince Andrew Atem Ebako. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Atem Ebaku, uh, for intervening on the program and tell us, telling us what you think about uh, what is uh, going on in uh, Ghana. Now, let's uh, get back to you, uh, Mr. Nicodemus Amegashiti. So, uh, we, uh, Mr. Ebaku, we is talking about you no know, partisan uh, politics in Africa. Africa have uh, realized what they need uh, and many other things. Uh, you quickly react to what he said and then uh, let's uh, get uh, back to uh, the root cause of uh, the this uh, protest and now uh, I did a little research and uh, going through uh, what some of these Ghanaians are saying there are five major things that have led to this uh, protest uh, now uh, say food prices have reached over 120 percent inflation uh, Ghana city has depreciated by 60 percent now uh, Ghana is one of the African countries with the highest uh, fuel prices and uh, the general inflation of the country hit over 37 percent and last but not least a uh, lack of leadership in the midst of the economic uh, challenges so these are some of the five things uh, that have been outlined as being the major reasons uh, uh, why uh, Ghanaians went out the streets on uh, Saturday uh, to protest. Uh, so uh, what can you say about uh, this? And, uh, and and also looking at the way, uh, the, uh, let's take a look at how the uh, Kofado government has been able to manage the economic crisis in the country. What is your take on that? Has the government been able to do something that uh, will, that uh, could ease the, uh, the economic crisis? We know the issue of economic crisis is something that is worldwide, but apparently Ghana seems to be having a pinch more of it than other parts of the world. So what has the Inanna Akofa government uh, done to ease uh, some of these worries of Ghanaians? They, it's not like Ghanaians are uh, asking that everything to be, should be given to them uh, free of charge, but at least uh, people should be able to afford the uh, basic uh, commodities. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think I have to thank the, uh, the speaker for whatever contributions that he has made. It was really right on point. There is new colonialism staring at us in the face. If you put your own people at vantage points, be it the law courts, be it within the forces, be it within the police, such that if any anything happens and then you think that you have to uh, seek the redress at these state institutions, you are not going to get anything good. I must be honest with you. Take anything to court, like the elections. You go to court, they say, you know, uh, now they have already made a decision. So they put their people at vantage point, saying that there is no uh, permeation or whatever you can put it. Now, this country now, as we see, what are we supposed to do? Let's listen to the people. If you are not able to account to the people, why call for more? Initially, when they were campaigning, they said, you try me, Nana Kufuado said it. When you had a moon, some you share, my brethren, try me and see. Within a short time, he said, four more. Oh, okay. Well, the constitution says that you go two tenths. You are given a second tenth. Now, things are rather upside down. Listen to the people. Get to the grassroots. All these provinces, one factory, one, uh, one district, one dump. One village, one dump. One district, one factory. 
And then each district was going to be given a thousand dollars with which to operate towards development at the grassroots. All these things have not been done. Yet you are enjoying the luxury of your position. Your uh, family members are in key positions, enjoying everything. Why won't the people make noise? If you say that you're going to bring us free education and whatnot, make it free and then train more. That was what the the, the previous government, that is the Bahama government, was talking about that. We need to do everything gradually, such that you build more training schools, uh, teacher training colleges, you build uh, nursing training colleges, build more uh, universities that will train the doctors and all that. We said, no, said that he, he, he was saying that kicking against it, he caught his message that they were going to be denied their allowances, said that these will be channeled to building more uh, of the structures that will accommodate many more teachers, many more nurses, many more personnel. No, you said you are going to pay them. Fine. You came in, you paid twice, thrice, it ended there. Are you not seeing the people? Do you expect the people to applaud you? No. So, it is, I will always say it, it is the boomerang. It is the, the, the ball that you throw at the wall will definitely have to come back to you. It is karma that is staring at them in the face. And it is hitting back to all Ghanaians. We are all suffering. That's so many, that, that what you hear the people talk about. Oh, Ghanaians are suffering, teachers are suffering. That was the slogan they were using. And now it is back to them. Laurentia, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. But yes, there is a way out there. They are taking so much rules well ahead of time that any government that comes in will have to suffer, will suffer. Just to, they have created an atmosphere in the grounds in such a way that no matter how hard you try, it is only interventions that maybe they will write off the loans because the parliament itself cannot see what you are doing with these loans. You will still want them to approve more. You are not able to account for uh, COVID-19, you are blaming things on COVID-19. One much more money came in, and then you are still blaming things on Ukraine. What else do you want the people to do? Applaud you? The people are being objective. The people are being objective. The man who spoke, spoke well, right? it's not a matter of first term, second term, third term. If you are not doing well, J.J. Rowling said it some time ago. I will say it again that may so rest in peace. That the next revolution is not going to be the armed forces raising guns. It is going to come from the people themselves. And that is what we are seeing. He himself, uh, himself was a master of uh, demonstrations. He mastered demonstrations. Yes, today, it is, it is not that easy having demonstrations. I don't know what these people went through before being granted those uh, uh, permission to demonstrate. It might have taken them a lot of effort. Yes. 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 Lorenzo, what is it that you want me to talk about again? No, okay. Have I answered your question? Yes, Mr. Nicodemus. Now, uh, uh, President Akufuano still has uh, about uh, uh, two years to be in office before his term comes to an end. Uh, uh, is there really something that the Akufu government can do to appease Ghanaians, to make the lives of Ghanaians uh, better? Because uh, when you listen to some of these grievances from Ghanaians, uh, some say when they take loans, and now people, are, when you look at some of those placards they are carrying, they say yeah, Akufu Ado must go uh, IMF no, meaning that uh, the uh, uh, current uh, negotiations that the current the government is making with the International Monetary Fund, most Ghanaians are not for it because uh, apparently in the past the president had made mention of the fact that uh, Ghana should be able to manage its own problems and no go f not go for uh, this uh, international funding or for these uh, loans. But now the government is strongly behind uh, acquiring a loan from the International Monetary Fund. And there are claims that when such loans come in, 9% of this money goes to their private banks. Uh, how uh, true is this? Uh, what can you say about this? And what 
is it that the government can still do? The, gov the president still has about two years to be in power. What can you advise the Akufo government, Akufo Ado government to do to be able to put Ghana on the right track? It is not an easy task, but at least I think there is something that the government is not doing right, and that's why the Ghanaians are on the streets. So um, the president should be able to listen to the Ghanaians. And what, in your opinion, do you think the government should do to make things better for every normal Ghanaian? We're not going to to, to IMF. People said that they were not the IMF. A lazy government goes to work. Referring to Mahama, a lazy government goes to borrow and that they will not go out to borrow because the money is sitting here in Ghana. Because Baumia was boasting that he was the deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not speaking against anybody. I'm speaking as a Ghanaian. If you take loans and you are not able to account to the people, you misuse, why go to IMF now? So if you if somebody was a lady going to IMF and you are now going, what, what name do you give yourself? How do you call yourself? How do you want to be termed? How do you want to be targeted? That is one, one thing. Fine. They are going to uh, IMF. The people are saying, you know, what, what are they going there to do? Because you very people said, uh, the government said that the money is here in Ghana. So why don't you harness the resources? Harness whatever the, the gold, the, 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 the oil, whatever negotiations you have with the, 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 those who are drilling the oil. If these things were not properly done, why not sit down with them, renegotiate, and then do things that will bring some relief to the very people whom you are holding all these things in trust for. You are representing the people. You are representing the people. Therefore, when the money comes, let them know this is how much has come in. This is how much has gone into those this is how much has gone into that. I am sure the people will see reason with you. The people will come out with many more suggestions. That will make your, 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 your governance popular. But if nothing is happening, you are borrowing, you are not accounting for. Even if somebody is saying that these things are going into private banks, I told you that they made sure all the private banks were collapsed instead of helping them to revamp their uh, operations so that they will have a monopoly of all, over all the monies that were coming in for them to you know, somebody will say loot and show whatever i don't know i'm not i don't even know what works to you yes it is true they collapse these banks to promote their own interest and not the interest of the ordinary guardian that is why the people are saying that we should go out. Find what they should do. Let them account for whatever they have taken. If you are a good steward, definitely, I think many more responsibilities will be added to you. The position you are holding now in that office, if you perform and then your employer see that you are doing well, would they give you many more responsibilities? Would they promote you? Small businesses like we are seeing this are collapsing. They are collapsing. There is something called galamsi that is illegal mine. Anybody at all would set up anything and then uh, uh, do surface mining without using appropriate technology. All these the, the uh, chemicals that they use, the mercury and all that, will run into streams, rivers, the rivers that serve the people, the rivers from which we tap our water, all polluted. So that they can, they, whatever they will use to treat the water is now about six times that what they use. The tap is following, but it's like uh, you are using 
cocoa drink or uh, milo or whatever. Tap treated water. This is something that is happening in Ghana because they came in, they seized people's machines that were being used for these illegal mining. Overnight, 500 excavators vanished. Where did they go? And what are they on today? Yet people are using them. You know, they, these excavators have numbers. Those whose machines were seized have been able to scout around to locate them. And they are saying that they themselves are using them. If you arrest uh, 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 cannabis, cannabis sativa, that is what we call weed, the, 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 those who smoke it well, they say that they go blind or uh, mad or whatever. Look, if you seize it and then overnight it also gets missing, you seize cocaine overnight, it goes missing. Where is it? And who is supposed to be blamed? These are the things that we are grappling with here in Ghana. And I want to speak as a citizen of the Republic of Ghana, not speaking for any political party, uh, because I also feel it. When traveling, you see, you cross rivers, you cross uh, bridges, you look, turn and look inside the river and you, your heart is down because years back, when uh, uh, the vehicle stopped at these rivers, we could just drink straight from those rivers. You would not believe it. So what are we doing? What are we doing okay, to ourselves? Thank you, thank you so much. We are actually uh, at the end of the program. But uh, before we go, we have this last caller. Let's get uh, what uh, this last caller has to say. And when we come back, you just uh, uh, give your conclusive remarks, uh, maybe in 30 seconds, as we are on the time. It's already against us. Uh, let's get this caller. And when we come back, you just give your conclusive remarks. Hello, and thanks for joining us on the program. Can we get the caller on the line? Hello, Afric Media. Hello, the panelists. I am Martin. Once more, well, what is happening in Ghana, it is very true that in one point at a time, any economy is bound to face some kind of difficulties, meaning that uh, all our economy, our economy, we are based on social, financial, moral, and whatever aspects, are not totally based on us. So we also have to depend on some aspects that are international. We are also talking here like the International Monetary Fund that also in some way, I don't know whether it's just a colonial kind of outfit that some have tried to moderate our finances and the way that they have to operate. And by this, I actually mean that's the reason why you actually discover that you have never seen any African currency actually rising, rising above the dollar or the euro and so on and so forth. But whatever the case may be and whatever is going on in Ghana now, I only applaud the people for taking that democratic step and for government to giving a listening ear and not sending, uh, releasing their military to move out on here like it is done elsewhere within the continent so far. So I applaud the people of Ghana and I think it is their right and President Nana, uh, President Nana is actually their employee, they are the people who gave him the power and that power he is supposed to respect them and respect their wishes. So I pray at least that what is actually going on now, we should actually look at it in good faith and see how he can actually rescue the economy which is actually supposed to benefit the people and not only the politicians. Two, in another way too, uh, I also think too that it's actually time we should start seeing how we can actually plant our economy to depend on it and not only on this uh, uh, financial institutions uh, out of the country, borrowing money and so forth and so on and so forth. I was actually thinking that it was actually time for Ghana to be saying that, oh, they want to go to the African Development Bank to see how they can actually put this money and go on and use it to elevate the economy. But that is not happening, we see. It is just another way of manipulation which the international community are actually made. They will borrow this money and actually use it to elevate the economy now. But what happened? The economy is still indebted. 
maybe decades after decades after decades after decades, they still have to lose a lot of money to see that they repay uh, this loan. And if this loan, if they are actually taken from the African Development Bank, you discover that even they are paying back this with uh, no matter what amount of interest, to, it will still go back to benefit the economy of uh, Africa, which uh, we. Uh, Africans and we are based in Africa and we actually have to see the benefits. Well, the panelists, I am great. I am very much happy that what is actually going on in Ghana is actually by the will of the people and I think the rest of the continent will actually learn from what is happening there, particularly our leaders. Not everything is the goal, not everything is with the, what, with the feast, with the, maybe with force and so on and so forth. Let's listen to our people. Let's listen to the cry of our people and see how we can actually take good measures to rescue them from all the wars that they're actually going through that are being caused by the so-called our uh, governments. Once more, have a great day. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Maurice uh, Martin, uh, who called us all the way from uh, Cameroon. Thanks for your contribution. Now, before we get your conclusive remarks, just a few uh, uh, comments uh, from those who have dropped on our Facebook page. Uh, we have Fazayan BC who says, uh, thank God people are waking up about the president who only work for imperialist resign Nana Adowa. And another comment uh, is in French, uh, and it says, uh, uh, un chien président comme ça qui a trahi le peuple togolais. So, uh, and, uh, and another comment uh, before we go, uh, it says, Siriti uh, Siritie Bengali, who says, President Nana Akufo Ado out, we want your resignation. Uh, so, uh, those are some of the few comments uh, that we had uh, on our Facebook page as concerns the program. Uh, we are already against time. Like I said, Mr. Nicodemus, uh, just in 30 seconds, can you give your conclusive remarks as we uh, find our way out of today's edition of the program? resign but in the advanced countries you equally quickly hear of them resigning you hear of their ministers resigning because they see that things are not working well i think we should equally learn from them and i urge all Ghanaians to equally fight for their rights it is a constitutional right once again i'm speaking for myself as nicodemus amegashi and not for any particular uh, uh, political party for anybody to take me on anywhere I speak as a Ghanaian with a constitutional right, a voting right. Laurentia, thank you. I hope to see you another time somewhere, somehow, anyhow. God bless you. Amigashiti. He joined us all the way from uh, Ghana. He is a retired assistant director of uh, social welfare of uh, that uh, country. And just to remind our televiewers also that he's currently uh, engaged in a bachelor's degree in uh, theology at the end uh, time harvest Bible College, uh, Sekondi Takradi, uh, Ghana. Thank you so much for your time, sir. And uh, looking forward to having you in subsequent editions of the program. We want to thank all our televiewers uh, for taking our time uh, taking our time to be with us this day uh, to take a look at what is happening on the continent of course uh, the last edition of the program comes up uh, uh, tomorrow at the same time uh, that's 14 hours uh, gmt please uh, do uh, tune in to find out uh, more about what is happening on the continent and how uh, we can find african solutions to african uh, problems we are here to put our heads together to see how we can make africa a better place uh, on today then you have a wonderful moment in the company of the rest of our transmissions. Appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to all the viewers of Africa. Thank you. Thank you.